What exactly happens behind the scenes when a royal decides to marry a commoner? Yeah. Was the royal family more responsible for the Irish famine than we think? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. Here are the top 10 darkest secrets that the British government is hiding from you. Number 10, no crown, no problem. Okay, directly after his father died in 1936, King Edward VIII took the throne. But the tides quickly turned when less than a year later, he renounced his position. Now, this was huge. This was a massive scandal right off the bat. This is not something that's taken lightly in the royal family. Turns out the woman responsible for stealing his heart was that of Wallace Simpson, American socialite who'd already been divorced once before. And at this point, she was working through her second divorce, so you could only imagine how folk reacted to that, right? His proposal to Simpson, of course, caused social and political backlash. The Church of England wasn't so chill with Edward marrying somebody who had already been divorced, so Edward was forced to abdicate. He had to, okay? Edward and Simpson then tied the knot in 1937, and they stayed together until Edward's death much later in 1972. So, dare I say, it was worth the trouble. Number nine, a fateful turn of events. Queen Victoria's reign began in 1837 and it lasted until the Queen's death in 1901. At just age 18, Alexandrina Victoria had to rise up to the throne. She was born, of course, on May 24th, 1819, and Queen Victoria was actually fifth in line when she was born. So right off the bat, it was actually highly unlikely that she would ever get to the crown in the first place. And then one by one, all of her family members suddenly began passing away. In four years, three of Victoria's cousins passed, and then her father and grandfather died, both a week apart from one another. So by the time 1830 rolled around, Victoria was only 11 years old, and already she was next up. She was next in line for the throne. Number eight, the Irish famine. The Great Famine took out a lot of people, not just Victorian women, right? Back in 1845, a potato crop that a lot of the Irish population relied on were just suddenly no longer available. A group of microorganisms wiped them all out, and in result, around one million folk died or had to leave. It was draconian law and British ruling that made the exported food hard to reach people, right? Now this famine led to Irish independence and of course anti-union movements. The show Victoria actually pulled no punches back in 2017. An episode showed the true happenings behind the Great Irish Famine and behind the role that Queen Victoria herself played in coming to the aid of her then subjects. The death of at least one million. This was a very dark seven years in Irish history. Historian Christine Keenally spoke out and says, quote, there is no evidence that she had any real compassion for the Irish people in any way, end quote. Number seven, Kensington system. So as if that wasn't already stressful enough, Victoria was brought up under something called the Kensington system, which if you haven't heard before, is pretty awful. Victoria's mother, Duchess Victoria of Kent, created the system to control her daughter. She literally isolated the child from mates or family members, anybody, you name it. Her mother did this to keep her pure. Victoria only had two playmates growing up. She had her half-sister, Princess Theodora of Linnigan, and the Duchess's attendant, Sir John Conroy, his daughter, Victoire. I mean, I only had three friends growing up, so like, I get it, but this is just cruel, you know what I mean? Give her some options. She shared a room with her mother until she was the queen. She literally couldn't walk down the hallway alone. Victoria has reflected on her childhood, and it's confirmed that she hated John Conroy for manipulating her mother. So, it's very confirmed that she was not happy with any of this. She referred to him as Demon Incarnate. Number six, Meghan Markle solo strut. Okay, back in May 2018, we all set our alarm, okay? We woke up and we watched this royal wedding. It was lovely. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, his new duchess. This was historic. At the historic wedding, Thomas Markle was a no-show. Meghan just walked down the aisle by herself in front of, you know, a billion people watching at home or streaming it. No pressure. It was thought that at the time, this was because of Thomas's health issues. See, prior, Thomas suffered a heart attack just days before the wedding. So, of course, nobody was upset. It was, you know, of course noted, though. Now, cut to a year or so later, Thomas and the duchess aren't as close, it seems. There's some beef unfolding. Thomas even spoke out against his own daughter. There was a scandal where Megan spoke to Oprah, you know, Oprah. It was that whole tell-all experience. Megan actually said to her father, if you tell me the truth about working with paparazzi, that we can help. But he wasn't able to do that, and that for me has really resonated, especially now as a mother. Number five. Lead-based makeup. When I started here at the studio, I was like, okay, gotta put on some face cream maybe, drink some water, get rid of like some of these bags, I hope. Finding a skincare routine of any sorts is easy now. The lovely World Wide Web has our backs. It's a wonderful era that we live in now, but the cosmetic game back in the 18th century, <laughs> oh boy, not so fun, was it? In the 18th century, lead mixed with vinegar was used as makeup. Yeah, you would look more pale, you would have the Victorian look, gotta have those veins popping out, all serious and such, with a splash of sulfur, of course, to make those freckles 
pop. Queen Elizabeth I used cosmetics containing lead, mercury, and arsenic. The same poison that took out George III and Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, not safe at all. In fact, arsenic was on the priority list of hazardous substances. So yeah, toxic metal exposure is still an issue we're facing in this era, let alone Victorian era. Number four close cousins. The life of Queen Victoria wasn't anything like a fairy tale, obviously. So when you think about the royal family, at least when I was younger, I thought being a queen or a king meant you could just eat chocolate all day, play chess, and then attend a gala. Yeah, you just look cute and go to the ball every single day. No, it's not quite, uh, it's not quite that really at all. Queen Victoria had to do everything herself. She even had to propose to Prince Albert. Like, come on. Now it's royal tradition that nobody shall propose to a reigning monarch, so it made sense. So cut to October 1839, Victoria asked Albert Albert for his hand in marriage. We love it. It all started when the pair was 17 years old. Victoria met the young prince, of course, at Kensington Palace during the Kensington system, and they were put together because Victoria's uncle felt like this could be beneficial down the road. Yeah, first cousins getting married sounds bizarre, but as you've seen on Game of Thrones or even this channel, it's quite common. Number three, Boy Jones and other attempts. Being the queen and all, a security team is always needed, and during her reign, there were multiple, multiple attempts to harm the young queen. The first attack was in 1840. An 18 year old man named Edward Oxford fired towards the Queen's carriage. Probably took 14 seconds to prepare, right? When Edward was accused of high treason, he was actually found not guilty due to insanity. A couple years later, in 1842, it happened again. This time, two men fired at her. Again, both missed, not great aim. In 1849, her carriage was then attacked by William Hamilton. In 1850, as the carriage was passing the gates of Buckingham Palace, Robert Pate, a retired soldier, ran up and started hitting her with his cane. Victoria was okay during all this, but of course, she was shook. This is some dark history. But then things got a little worse. If you haven't heard of Boy Jones or anything that happened there, I saved it for the end because it's, uh, yeah, it's quite creepy. A teenager stalked the queen back in 1838 until 1841. It was quite a long time. His name was Edward Jones. This guy somehow managed to break into Buckingham Palace more than once. The guy just knows a route in and he would break in often and would hide under the queen's sofa. Yeah, he wouldn't break anything or steal anything. He would just sit on her throne. But he would also do one of the worst things ever. He would go through her, uh, her drawer. Number two, Bloody Mary. England's first female monarch, Mary I, ruled for just five years. The only surviving child of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. Mary took the throne after the brief reign of her half-brother, and they say she was an evil queen, but after my homework, I'd have some chips on my shoulders too. She was married at nine and then at 11. At such a young age, everyone's yelling at you because you're too young to have kids. Like, I couldn't even imagine the pressures that were given to her, right? That's awful. She was promoted and demoted so many times, no wonder she snapped, honestly. Every time she was close to the throne, all of a sudden her family tree was just rearranged by law, right? How confusing is that? Her dad also decided to go down the other family route. She is infamously remembered for burning 300 English Protestants at the stake, which earned her the nickname Bloody Mary. So yeah, it's horrible, horrible stuff. She really snapped. Her brother found a loophole with religion, so she was like, okay then, just light him up, I guess. She's also remembered as teaming up with her half-sister Elizabeth I and ruling together, making them the first two British queens. She was spoiled from birth, but she was pretty badass, not gonna lie. And finally, number one, Queen Elizabeth's health. The world was left in disappointment when we read that Queen Elizabeth got COVID. I remember early on, Tom Hanks got it and we're all like, eh, come on, Woody. You know, it was kind of rooting for him. But when the queen got it, it was just deflating, right? The 95 year old monarch was celebrating her platinum jubilee, meaning this is now 70 years on the throne. 2022 was a staple for the royal family. And on top of that, the queen has also taken on these royal family scandals. They're unfolding one by one and she's seeing them all. Queen Elizabeth also lost her companion, her husband, Prince Philip passed away April 9th, 2021. So she was quite lonely facing all of these scandals, the most controversial of which was Prince Andrew's settlement with his sexual assault accuser. Yeah, she has to deal with that while she's dealing with COVID. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10.